Well, these two are just too cute for words. They're busy playing around, and poor Gwen is trying to sleep, but there's no chance. They keep biting her and squeezing themselves between her legs and just generally being up to no good. You can see they, they are now tucked together. And double trouble, that is for sure, these two. They really are funny little things, and the one is a lot shyer than the other one. When we came around just to get a little slightly better angle on them, you find the one with the lighter face is a lot more nervous, went running inside the hole and took a while for that little one to come out. The darker faced one seems to be completely unfazed by us and is still messing around and biting mom and going crazy. But you can see, look, Gwen's got her arms around the one. Oh, now it's managed to pop out now and is on the other side. So she was busy. <laughs> see, she's biting her toes. Shame, Gwen. The mother's work is never done. <laughs> it must be quite sore. These little hyenas have sharp teeth, and you can imagine being bitten on your toe by one of these. It's not very pleasant. Now I'm... Just ...over a week now, and already they're starting to kind of endear themselves to, to all the presenters that have seen them, and I'm pretty sure Taylor's going to absolutely love these two, and I know Ali will die if she sees these, so... There's going to be a lot of very happy girls, I would imagine, at camp when these little ones come out for either one of them. Craig, you want to know how we tell male and female hyenas apart? Well, Craig, it is quite difficult because hyenas have a situation where their clitoris extends and it forms a fake male genital and, and they also produce more testosterone than the males do, so they typically are quite a lot larger. So they are, the easiest way is if you have them together is that the bigger ones are always going to be your females. The males are not bigger than the females. And the second thing is that when you see males, they generally show you submissive behavior, whereas females, because it's a matriarch society, will be the ones that will be far more bold around any sort of food item or even around a den area, the likelihood of a male spending time around young ones is very, very slim. The males generally get pushed away by the females when they come in this direction. The other way that you can tell is just by looking at the genitals themselves. If there's a big rounded end to the genital, then that is generally a male. If it's just a straight edge, then it's normally a female. But it is very tough, particularly when they're at the size of these two little ones. It's almost impossible to tell male and female yet. You'll have to wait a little bit and see. but. Once they get older, like I say, size is a, is a big factor in being able to sex them from afar. But these two are so playful. Look, Mom's got it pinned by the head between her legs, and it's still not strong enough just yet to lift Mom's head. leg. There we go. Now, I believe Jamie's wildebeest have started to run, and hopefully that means something is chasing them. Let's quickly go across to her.